Welcome back to our live OTR race for the U.S. Senate show. By the way, you'll notice that we've expanded here at the roundtable. Our OTR political analysts are here. Democrat Marianne Marsh is with us this morning. Republican Pat Griffin is with us this morning. We're going to continue our conversation with Jeff Deal, Republican for U.S. Senate. He's live in Hanover at the Eating Establishment. Ms. Go ahead. Representative, can you uh, still hear us? Yeah, Representative? Hear yep, good. Um, You've accused Senator Warren of doing nothing for Massachusetts when she's worked with Republicans to get over the counter hearing aids, hundreds of millions of dollars for fishermen, dredging Boston Harbor, increasing money for opioids and the Green Line extension. Is that nothing? It's cutting in and out. Representative, can you hear me? Hello? I think we've uh, lost the representative, uh, at least uh, audio-wise. That's, that's, the, that's the, the trials and tribulations of doing live, live television. Live television, that's correct. So what we're going to do is we're going we're to continue to try to work to reestablish his connection. And as, as we do that, we can bring Patrick and Marianne into the conversation. Uh, let me start at the beginning. We, we extended this offer to Senator Warren. Originally, she said she wanted to be here live this morning, and then it was, then it was too busy. I'm, I'm just curious. Is, is there a... It, 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 and anything else at play, perhaps, Marianne? Like this is no, I can't imagine overconfidence. There is. I, no, no, not at all. I think there were a lot of scheduling issues and all that. That team's always terrific. They've been here a lot. They did a great job at the debate the other night. I don't think it was anything more than that. We can get a live truck anywhere. I was going to say in the Commonwealth, we can get a live truck anywhere in the Union. To can you get one to Wisconsin? Can you get well, one to Ohio? She, she is can in you the get one to to uh, well? Uh, Elizabeth Warren here? has spent a lot of time the week before the the actual election well, out of Massachusetts. That's arrogant. That's taking for granted. 30, and that's because she doesn't care about Patrick, running for the Senate. She's, she's done, running for president. She's done 37 town hall meetings in Massachusetts alone which is 36 more, maybe Marianne, 37 more than Jeff Deal. Memo to you Senator should, Warren, she can walk and you down. should not be so Jeff, arrogant. Jeff Deal, Jeff Deal we, we've reconnected audio-wise. Mercifully. Uh, Marianne, you just, said, you just said Senator Warren has done 37, 37 town, town halls, halls and, and Jeff Deal's done zero. I don't think he's done have you done a, Have you done a town hall, Jeff? Have I done town halls? I've done uh, events all across the state that were open to everybody, unlike her town halls, which were closed events where she had uh, pre-screened questions. So I've been at, uh, I don't know, probably a couple hundred events by now for the last 18 months campaigning and, again, meeting people face-to-face, -face, taking questions face-to-face. -face. Sure. I just want to ask you the question that we tried to ask you uh, before you lost your audio. Sure. Um, during our U.S. Senate debate this past week, I think it, I believe it was on uh, Tuesday, Jeff Deal asked us, you asked Senator uh, Elizabeth Warren, um, well, you accused her basically of uh, not doing anything for Massachusetts when it's clear that she has helped in many ways in raising hundreds of millions of dollars for fishermen, dredging Boston Harbor, increasing money for opioids and the Green Line extension. Is that nothing? Well, first of all, you know, I have legislation that I've supported on Beacon Hill that helps my district as well. But, you know, when, she, when it comes to legislation that she's filed that's been signed by the president, that's zero. In fact, she's voted against legislation that's helped Massachusetts, like the tax reform bill that's given our state record unemployment right now. More people are making money. She called it crumbs. Well, she uh, said look, also that it was a giveaway now, to the banks. She, she said it was a giveaway to yeah, banks and she was, it wasn't worth signing because of so much money going to the banks. Well, she wants to say that it's a giveaway to corporations. My wife and I own a small business. We're a corporation. We're trying to pay our employees before we pay ourselves. 90% of small businesses are 20 people or under. That's who's benefiting from the tax cut that is now reinvesting in their employees, hiring more people, giving them higher wages, and she wants to undo that by repealing it. That's what she said. She's on record on uh, wanting to go backwards on the, uh, the economic boom that we're having right now. Rep Representative Deal, if you win this election, your support for President Trump would be the opposite of what most Massachusetts voters apparently say that they want. For example, keeping health coverage for pre-existing conditions. How would you vote if you were a member of the Senate? No, I, we have to keep pre-existing health uh, care coverage. In fact, Massachusetts had a health care plan that was working. Uh, we had a connector that was working. We switched over to the Affordable Care Act. I voted against that because we had 100% children covered, 98% adults covered. Uh, it was working. It was affordable. We switched over to the quote-unquote Affordable Care Act, and nobody got that $2,500 dollar annual savings. In fact, now it's costing people sometimes more than their mortgage to cover the family of four. That's not working. And Massachusetts has had the ability to deliver it. We need to go back to making sure Massachusetts is put first with health care. Elizabeth Warren wants to do universal health care where uh, government pays for everything. That doesn't drive costs down. It's, it's the free market and innovation that drives technology to make health care better and also keeps costs under control. When government pays, there's no incentive to save money. It's like college loans. When government's the guaranteed payer, because they took over with the affordable 
Affordable Care Act college loans, that means that colleges have no incentive to lower the cost. We need free market involved to help drive down costs. Representative Deal, thank you so much for joining us live and, and enjoy the enjoy the next 48 hours. Thank you for your time, sir. Greatly appreciate it. Jeff thank Deal joining much. us appreciate this, it. this morning from a diner. You can see the, 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 the cling of the cups was, was very important this morning. Yeah. So let's, back to the round table. My question, you just heard uh, Representative Deal, you've heard uh, Senator Warren many times. Give me their strength and their weaknesses, just one of each. We'll start with you, Pat. Uh, Jeff Deal's strength is he would actually serve as the United States Senate full time. That would be his commitment. He'd serve the full term. Elizabeth Warren's um, strength is she's a card carrying member of the Trump resistance. That's a very strong position in a, in a place like the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Strength. For Warren? Let's we'll start with Warren. Sure. Yeah, her fight. She fights for Massachusetts. She fights for her convictions. She fights against Donald Trump. Massachusetts voters like that. For Jordan. Deal, yes. the, his strength and weakness is Donald Trump. His, you know, having Trump guarantees him 33 percent. It also guarantees he'll never get over 51 percent. And it's pretty disingenuous of him to duck your question about. Um, event. He talked about events. You're campaigning. You go to events. He didn't do any. But town he made hall one meetings. good point. He made and, one and very, none, very good point. And none of Elizabeth Warren's town hall um, events that's, were closed we, or pre. Patrick, you don't know what you're Joe, talking about. As Joe Biden would no, say. you don't know what you're talking about. The and it's shameful that, that you sit there and talk about things that you meetings. don't. No have been about. so incredibly controlled that by the Warren open, people. That is not true. Marianne, the toe marks for Senator Warren one? are far more one? extensive than those have for a presidential candidate. Always have, have been. been. She's been handled like no one have I've ever seen. One? Have you been to one? Uh, listen to me. I've seen her here. I've seen her at other but events at and places. And I've watched like her Deal. overhandled to the you point like where Deal. she doesn't I, get I, near I wanna, the I, folks. I'm going to I would blow a whistle, but I can whistle too loud. I want to move on to this. There was a moment during our debate Last, last Tuesday night here at Channel 5 when Jeff Deal asked to surprise Senator Warren about an ethics complaint filed by a conservative group during the Kavanaugh hearings claiming that she violated rules. I want to play that answer for you if you didn't hear it. Here's what she said. That's something that you should not be doing, first of all, when we are having a national discussion about the Supreme Court. I will check into it, but I don't know. She said, she said, I don't know. Marianne, is this more than a, than a political molehill or is it just a political molehill? It's not even that. It's shameful. I mean, they did the same thing to Kamala Harris. They, they're doing it to anybody who's thinking about running in 2020 is a fact. It's like Brian Kemp, the secretary of uh, state in Georgia today, charging Democrats with cyber crimes down there when he's been hacking voter registration. Shameful. Patrick. She sure kind of looked surprised, didn't she? The bottom line is when you mix your official duties, which the email claimed to be, which she sent out, she and Senator Harris, about voting no for on Kavanaugh. And you say at the bottom of the page, by the way, we're trying to build the strongest team we could have. Please help support. That is a mixing of official business and campaign. She should be investigated. She looked really surprised. I have a feeling there's more to come on this. Let's move on to some other races. Um, there are other races that we're going to be keeping an eye on here in Massachusetts. Democrat Congressman Bill Keating is getting a serious challenge from Republican businessman Peter Tedeschi. Could there be an upset in the ninth? That's the South Shore, Cape, and Islands. Marianne. Absolutely not. It's not, not even happen. close. Flat about, and clear, absolutely yeah, no, not. No. Okay. What about you, Pat? It's unlikely. I think the district is ripe for this. If there's any place, that's the only place. It's going to be a tough battle. Uh, Tedeschi's run a good campaign, but it's going to be tough. Let me talk about Massachusetts 3. Obviously, the, in the 3rd Congressional District, Nikki Songus is stepping aside. It's an open seat. Two political newcomers, Democrat Lori Trahan, Republican Rick Green. Patrick, how do you break this one down? Yeah, I, I think it's more of the same. I think Rick Green's run a good campaign. It's very, very difficult, given the demography and turnout in that district, to make that change hands. By, by the way, just to be clear, the graphic showed Dan Coe. Dan Coe is not running at this point in time. He was already defeated. It's Rick Green that's running against her. How do you look at it? Yeah, Lori Trahan walks away with this race, period, full stop. She's done a, she ran a great primary campaign. She kept on running. She ran a great, uh, she's running a great general election. And Rick Green doesn't have the standing, nor did he put the money in to make this competitive. It is not. The live political roundtable continues right here on OTR as we talk about the Baker Gonzalez race for governor. Stay with us.